From the borough of Queens, we're at the home of the Mets, City Field. Tonight, it's an NL Eastern Division showdown between the Miami Marlins and the New York Mets. Mike Trout, one of the league's best hitters, looks to gain ground in the chase for a National League batting title. First pitch is next. Carlos Carrasco, the right-hander from Venezuela, gets the starting nod in this one. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, this guy has really good stuff. And he's commanding his off-speed pitches like he was in this last one. He threw the ball really well, picking up the win and allowing only two runs. If he brings that stuff back in this one, it could be back-to-back -back powerhouse performances. Here's Starling Marte, and we are set for baseball here this evening. First delivery to him. And we're underway as the first pitch is a check swing, but a called strike, 0-1. Fellas, these Mets, as they enter play here tonight, they come in looking to turn things around as they've dropped two straight. Yeah, Matty D. I, I think one of the toughest things, D. Rowe, is to keep playing with this sense of urgency. It looks like they're playoff bound, but the thing is, you need to keep going and, and not take your foot off the gas pedal. Yeah, you need to be rewarded for the marathon. That's exactly what this team has done. They've already clinched a playoff berth, and now they get ready for the spring. Try and find a way to get healthy, but not lose focus. So bases are empty with one out now. And next to hit will be Luis Arise. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Bases are empty. One man out. Ball in the dirt that time for a ball one and one. Arias is unlike many of today's hitters in the sense that he doesn't have a lot of swing and miss in his approach at the plate. More often than not, he gets contact, and I'm sure that makes him a frustrating hitter to face from a, a pitcher standpoint. Yeah. You know, he takes his chances when he has count leverage, without question. 1 0, 2 0. You'll see this guy try and get nasty a little bit, but he stays within himself. He knows what his strengths are, and he tries to drive the ball right back where it came from. This is pulled into right, and that's into the outfield for a one-out base hit. You think there's any justice in the game? Watch those two at bats. That Both of them hit on the absolute the screws. Field. One's right at one guy, and then one's Mike. a single. Go figure. Wow. Here's the center fielder, Mike Trout. And though he's been in a bit of a slump in the last few series, he's still in line to finish the season with one of the league's top batting averages. Yeah, he's had a monumental season. You can't take that away from him. But I'm sure he'll tell you that he's fully aware he is right in line to potentially run down a batting crown, but not the way he's swinging the bat right now. He has to find a way to relax himself at the dish. Nimmo, the range to his left and put it away. Two down. So now it'll be the four-hole hitter, Nicholas Castellanos. And there's a look at his home and road splits so far this year. Set. Here it comes. And he'll oh, try to crowd him there to start the at bat. It's 1 0. Oh. And you can already tell he's got his sights set on a batting title with a batting average of over 400 in his last 10 games here in September. But easier said than done. This guy, from start to finish, has been on point, not giving any at bats away. He's swinging a hot bat and making a strong push to end the season and that put that good. batting title belt the around his waist. Dan, after mm -hmm. that base hit right there, he's got a six-game hitting streak going. You know what? And this could be, this could lead him on to something, some bigger and better things right here. He's been swinging the bat pretty well, and he's been rewarded for it, as you talked about. Six-game hitting streak so far. Jesus Aguilar is in with two away now as he looks at a called strike one. Swing and a miss at a slider for a strike. Well, he's in a bit of hot water in this first inning, but if he can start throwing his slider effectively like that, he has a lot better chance of settling into this game. Arrives at second, Castellanos at first, two out in the inning. 
Hit on the ground to third. Davis grabs it cleanly. Go on to first will be in time, and the Marlins can't cash in here, and that ends the inning. So a couple of hits here in the top half, but nothing comes of it. Now the Mets will step up for their first shot in a scoreless ball game. Pablo Lopez is on the mound for game two. Dan Plezak, what's the word on him? This guy's having a real solid season up to this point. And I know he'd like to get one more notch in his belt to get to that 200 Ks on the season. He's awfully close, so you'd have to think in the back of his mind he'd like to punch out a few here and get into that 200 K club for the year. First offering. Jeff McNeil is in to start things off here as he looks at a called strike. It's nothing in one. Guys, this Marlins ball club as they begin play here tonight, have got to be considered one of, if not the hottest team in baseball right now. Winners of eight of their last ten ball games. Yeah, Maddie, I'm, I've been really impressed with this team, especially on the one recent ball, road trip. Strike. To start to it, they're three and one after four games, playing really fundamentally sound baseball. From offense to defense, pitching, it's all coming together for this group. Yeah. And he takes a cold strike too. Looked like he was going to wait him out, see if he was going to come over the heart of the plate. Well, newsflash, he is, and this hitter is going to adjust his batting gloves, and he better be ready in the box. Still the ball and two strikes. And that's a swinging strike three in the dirt. The throw to first is in time, one down. So next to hit is Brandon Nimmo to check out how he did in August versus how he's finishing off the season down the stretch here in September. First pitch coming, here it is. And he takes ball one. His career numbers against this pitcher. He has seven hits in 19 tries. Two balls and no strikes to the Mets center fielder. Lopez has pitched a little more than 160 innings in this campaign. And sports an ERA right around the major league average at just over four. Three and oh now. To be honest with you, I'm a little bit more afraid of the guy on deck than the guy that's up right now. If I'm on the mound, I want this guy up right now. He's the guy that's got to beat me. From the windup, the 3 0 pitch. This pitch is popped up. Anderson has a play. He hauls it in without any trouble, and there are two away. Batting third, the left fielder. Dominic. Next, it'll be Dominic Smith looking to get on base and keep this first inning alive. Now, here it comes. Nope. Bases are empty here with two men out. Not surprisingly, here, this is on the ground to the right side. On to the bag with it is Aguilar, and that'll retire the side. Mets go down one, two, three, and this is still a nothing, nothing ball game. So stepping in is Jorge Alfaro, He's looking to extend that hitting streak, which stands at eight games coming in. Now the first pitch. Skied into straightaway right. Right fielder giving chase. He's there and records the first down. Batting seven. The third baseman. Brian Anderson. Into the box. Brian Anderson. And he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Nope. Low for ball one. Bravo. 
Anderson, a 27-year-old. He was selected in the third round during the 2014 draft. Yeah, Maddie, they certainly got it right when they drafted this guy. He has turned himself into an absolute superstar. Everybody knows this guy's name, and kids are buying his jerseys. The 2-1 home is a fastball that misses. I got three one. Jazz Chisholm, the number eight hitter here, waits on deck. Full count now, three and two. Ready now with the payoff pitch. Now a swing and a miss. He struck him out, and it's two up, two down to start the second. Pretty textbook breaking ball for the punch out right there. Got it to bend a lot, and by the time it got there, it had fallen completely out of the zone. Not much you can do with that pitch. At the plate, Jazz Chisholm, as he'll get out ahead of a changeup and swing through it for strike one. The average not quite where he wants it, down in the 220s. 14 homers and 37 RBIs. Oh and one, here it comes. Down 0-2 to a guy with this much weaponry, five pitches he can go to, not looking good. And runs in on him as he can't get his arms extended. A great pitch there, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Marlins. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Last half of the second set to go. And up steps the power bat of Pete Alonzo. Oh, what the... Field in the overshift here. Now the pitch as he looks at a fastball that's in there for strike one. A ball and a strike to the Mets first baseman. So let's take a peek at the officiating crew in this one. Behind the plate is Kenny Jansen. You know, Kenny Jansen, Dero, he's kind of hard to figure out. Doesn't give a lot on the edges. He'll make you bring the ball into that plate. Yeah, Dan, Kenny Jansen is definitely consistent, and he'll reward pitchers around the knees. But on the edges right there, sometimes it's hit or miss. The one two is a swing and a miss. That's strike three. Boy, he's having a hard time just putting the ball in play right now. He took the hat trick with three strikeouts yesterday, and here's another one today. Looks to me like he just needs to simplify his approach and focus on making some contact. Digging in will be Michael Conforto, entering this one with a top 10 National League batting average mark. And the pitch. Oh, that's it. The 1 0. Hey. Little dribbler up the first baseline. He'll try again, one, two. Ball. Now a fastball awfully close, but he doesn't get the call. It's two and two now. 
We just saw a fastball right there. I would not be shocked if he tries to get this guy to go fishing right here and drops a little off-speed pitch in the dirt. Swing and a miss on the fastball that time. Out number two. Every pitcher looks Better to get off to a good start. I'd say he's off to a good start. How about the first five batters he's faced? Three of them he sent down via the strikeout. And that'll bring in the switch hitting Francisco Lindor as he'll take one a look out. at a sinker here too low for ball one. First at bat for him here and he brings with him a season tally of 30 long balls. Good pitch there had him a little out in front. You have to find a way to lay off that low sinker. There is just no way to do any damage. You're just looking at either a blue shin or a ground out to the left side. And this will find the wall deep in the corner. And he'll make it to second base now with two gone. As we look again at that double here, you can see that he was thinking too right out of the box. Smashed it down the line, and that was some great hustle to beat the throw to second to earn himself a double. J.D. Davis the next to bat. He enters play at number six in National League batting average. There's no way you could have forecasted this kind of season from this guy. Not to take anything away from him, but I don't think many people in baseball considered him to be one of the league's best hitters for average coming into this year. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Comes set, the 0 1. Drilled to first, and he whips on it as this ball's right under his glove. And not in time as the run scores. Check that out right there. I love me some of that. Staying inside the baseball, moving it the other way. Sometimes a pitcher can execute his pitch. It doesn't mean the batter can't grab a knock. Next to hit, James McCann. Opportunity for him here to pick up that runner from second with two away. Now here's the first offering. Hey, this pitcher's going to have to step off the mound right here and refocus. Take a deep breath, something. Can't keep falling behind and creating traffic. It puts everybody on edge, not only himself, his defense, yeah, ball, and especially his manager. One ball, one strike to count. One and one. Here it is. Davis stands at second with two gone. In the dirt here, but it won't skip away far enough for the runner to advance. Here's the two and two. Breaking ball that time that misses out of the zone. Some pitchers fall into the trap of getting in on three and two because they don't want to walk the guy. But with the base open, it's not the end of the world if you do. You still need to make a quality pitch. Skied into straightaway right. Castellanos able to track it down for the third out. Mets played a run on a couple of hits. there to make the play for the first out of the inning and here in the season's final month we give you a look there at where these guys sit in the division standings so one out 
on now for the Marlins in their half of the third. And that will bring up Starling Marte. First pitch of the A.B. now. The offense better get it going right here because they certainly can tell from their dugout. This guy is carrying himself with a presence out on the mound. He's got feel for all his pitches. In front of the changeup and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. He wants that changeup back right there. Great arm action on that changeup. Hitter was just a smidge out in front. The 0-2 once more. Is a swing and a miss. That's strike three. Pitching 101 is changing location and upsetting the hitter's timing. You do that, and everything's going to be fine. In that strikeout, he never threw the same pitch twice in a row, and he won the battle because of it. That'll bring up Luis Arise. As the first pitch to him is in there for a cold strike one. One for one with a single so far. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Hey, usually the second time through the order, you start seeing an incorporation of some more off speed stuff. But this guy's locating and feeling really good about his fastball. Two back to back. Waved at and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance at hitting that one, and the inning is over. Miami down in order. They're down 1 0. the Mets pitcher Carlos Carrasco as we move on to the no bottom pitcher. of inning number three. Carrasco. Now the first pitch. And she'll come up empty that time on a sinker at strike one. one. Down and away ball one. Here it comes on one and one. Hey. That's a pitch he'd like to have back. You're not going to see very many pitches like that from a pitcher of this quality. I'm sure he'd like to have that one back to take a swing at it. Pulled high in the air out to left field. Marte is under it. One away. So it's back to the top of the order now. And that'll bring in Jeff McNeil. First offering. Big swing, but a little dribbler here to the right side of the mound. And the off balance throw gets him. Nice play for the out. So here's Brandon Nimmo. Over one here in the early going. Nimmo. Here's the first pitch to him. The wind up and the 0 1. Behind 0 and 2 now. Two outs, nobody on, but a base runner here feels like he would really change the complexion of the inning. Big spot right here, middle of the order guys coming up. Let's see if he can extend the inning. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Marte is camped under this one and he will put it away to retire the side. Down in order go the Mets, but they're up one to nothing. New inning set to get underway, and next it'll be the outfielder, Mike Trout. Mike. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. Outside, that's the ball. He's ready. Here's the 1-0. -oh. That's ball, too. Pitching isn't always about getting everyone out. Sometimes it's about being smart and knowing when to pick your battles. He's been really careful with this hitter so far, and rightfully so. Now the 2-0. Hey. 
man, this pitcher is on right now, pounding the zone, attacking these hitters. He's making it look easy. Ball Too high prepared. that time, and it's three and one. Hey, throwing the ball great up until this point. Don't want to allow a leadoff walk. Needs to just focus in on his mechanics right here. Set. Here's the 3 1. And he lays off there, ball four. So the leadoff man is on here to begin stanza number four. Well, he loses him there, but that's just the first walk he's given up, along with a couple of hits. So his command has been pretty solid so far. Nick Castellanos at the plate now. He's singled in his first AB. He's set and the pitch. Man, this guy's been incredibly efficient so far in this one, mostly because he's getting ahead. 70% of the batters he's faced, he's thrown a first pitch strike to. Here's the 0 1 pitch. And one and one as this one's in on the hands. Here's a look over to first, and the runner back easily. Now the one and one pitch. Eight, two. Right, he's coming right after him, Matty. Three fastballs in a row. The one and two pitch. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. Boy, there's the perfect pitch right there, the straight changeup. He hadn't used it yet in this at bat, and what does he do? He uses it. Pulls the string and gets the big strikeout. In now, Jesus Aguilar. This will take a look at a slider here that finds the zone for strike one. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Here's the 0 1. Eight, two. Breaking one ball, ball below the down. zone. That's ball one. It's a great job to lay off on that nasty slider right there. It's the toughest pitch. It was my toughest pitch to lay off of. I was always sitting fastball middle away. And when that slider came out, boy, did it look like a heater for a long time. And a wave and a miss on a ball that was way out of the strike zone. There are two away now. I think he kind of trained the hitter's eyes in that at bat. What I mean is you'll find the first three pitches are all down around the knee. So as a hitter, he's probably looking down there again, and that's the perfect time to raise his sights and make a good pitch up. Runner at first with two gone, and up next will be the big catcher, Jorge Alfaro. From the stretch, as he will take a look at a fastball in there as that strike zone expands just a little. It's 0 and 1. From the belt, the pitch. I think a big reason why he's been so effective in this one that he's been just about getting ahead of every hitter. Seems like every one of them are 0 2, 1 and 2, and it's just about every at bat. And when that's the case, your chances of getting a good pitch to hit are way worse. Nothing in two count, and the pitch. Count one and two. He wasn't even close to swinging right there. That was a stone cold take. for the punch out and the offering. 
tried to hold up there. A field down to first and no swing. It's ball two. And he struck him out. His seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. Marlins lead one. They trail this one one to nothing. Dominic Smith comes into this at bat 0 for 1 in the ball game. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch. And a change up here, but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. Now a good Damn. pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. That's where he wants that sinker to end up, but that was a nice job of laying off. Hammers it to deep right field. A ball that's carrying, but he can't get to this one. It's off the wall. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. When that one left the bat, I wasn't sure where it was going to come down. I thought it might have a chance. Yeah, same here, man. It kind of got lost high in the sky before one hop the fence for an extra base hit. During the daytime, that thing probably would have carried out of here, but you can't complain too much about a double. So here's Pete Alonzo, and oh. he'll take a look at ball one. Struck out in his first at bat. Home. A swing and a miss, strike one. One and one. Hey, chalk that up to one you get away with. Once, maybe. Change up, belt high and above usually does not come back. He used his aggressiveness against them right there. Fouled off. Smith leads off second with nobody out. Oh, and they pull the string on a good change up there as he swings and misses, and he's set down on strikes for the second time tonight. Oh, man, he's been absolutely getting no overmatched right late the last couple of games. That's his fifth strikeout in this series alone. So clearly this pitching staff, they figured out how to attack this guy. We'll see if he can make any adjustments. Standing in now, Michael Conforto. He swings and lines it to left. Marte is in his tracks now as he makes the catch for out number two. The shortstop, Francisco Lindor. So here's Francisco Lindor now. Runner in scoring position with Chicago. Halfway to 100 pitches. Here it is. Hey, this isn't exactly the way you'd like to draw it up. Not throwing a lot of first pitch strikes, but the bottom line is he's getting outs. The 0 1 offering. Nope. Out there. And he misses with it, 1 and 1. Two out here and a runner at second. Two and one. Hey, after the double in his first at bat, looks like he's trying to pitch around this guy a little bit. Pulled toward right center field. On the move is Trout. He tracks it down, and that will end the inning. Fair to say? Oh, my goodness. Uh, these folks are not headed for a career on Broadway. The three of us return with more Wednesday Night Baseball after this. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. 
Matt, during the commercial break, I had a chance to catch up with manager Don Mattingly about the Marlins' offensive production. And one thing he mentioned to me was the lack of discipline he's seeing out of their at-bats right now. He said their pitch selection has been the main reason for their struggles today, as far too often they've been swinging at pitches outside the strike zone. That's leading to a lot of soft contact and easy outs. So the focus going forward is on shrinking the zone and forcing the opposing pitching to throw more strikes. Thank you, Heidi. Ready, here's the first pitch. Brian Anderson stands in as he looks at ball one here. And a good heater as he just watches this baby, a ball and a strike. Liner towards second. Well, this will be taken in at second base. Good positioning for the first down. Now with the plate is Jazz Chisholm looking to put the ball in play here. He went down on strikes in his first at bat. Yeah, and he didn't put up much of a fight either, Matty. Got to find a way. Can't go down three pitches. I don't care if you're staring at him or swinging at him. You have to find a way to make this pitcher oh, work a little bit harder. Strike one to start the at bat. Now the 0 1. And one that and misses one. one and one. And he'll come back with one and the third as the count moves to two and one now. This is on the ground over to first. And they will get no. He's in there. A very close play at first. So frustrating, Dero. You make a good pitch, and you get these guys that can run around and they're fast. You think you have an out, and all of a sudden it turns into an infield single. Yeah, this is definitely part of his game, the ground attack, Dan. He's a speedster. He's going to get a ton of infield singles, and he knows how frustrated that pitcher is. So now to the plate, Pablo Lopez. Now a bunt attempt here. Only plays to first, so the pitcher does his job as it's a successful sacrifice. Back to the top of the Miami lineup now and stepping in Starling Marte trying here to plate the tying run from second. Trying to hold the lead here's the delivery and a swing from him yields a foul pop out of play to the right. Not surprised he's laid on a heater right there just saw an off speed pitch wanted to stay back a little bit too long. Back up the middle. And that'll get through into center field for a base hit. The tying run is into score from second. It's one to one. You know, Dero, there are certain hitters that just love to come up and clutch two out RBI situations. And this guy certainly is one of those guys. Yeah, they're able to slow the moment down. It's not for everybody. This guy has ice water in his veins consistently coming through in big spots. Nice job right there to tie this one up. Into the box now, Luis Arias, one, and they right. pitch out here, but nothing's going on. Marte leads off first with a pair of outs in the inning, oh, and he won't bite at that point either. It's two and zero. Oh. That can be one of the downfalls of pitching out. It puts you behind in the count, and if you throw another ball, you're kind of in a difficult spot. Now a throw over to first, and a dive, but he's back in. And again a throw, no, runner back it. safely. Cold strike the throw 
And he can't hold on to the throw as it short hops him and eats him up. Well, they threw over there multiple times thinking he was going to try to swipe that bag. So they were onto him, but he just waited it out and took off when he had the chance. Nice job of base running there. One run, four hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. Pulled hard, but it's foul down the first base side. Again, he sends it out of play. You're lucky if you get one pitch a night right down the middle. Cannot be late on that fastball. Runner goes for third. Grounded softly to the right. Reined in. Throw on to first. Gets him and the side is retired. Marlins get one here on a couple of hits. Welcome back for the bottom of the fifth. Here's Heidi Watney. Matt, during the break, I caught up with the Mets manager to discuss his thoughts on his club's offense so far, and he really emphasized that they're not doing a very good job capitalizing on run scoring opportunities. With just one hit with runners in scoring position in the game, you can understand why he feels that way. But he also says he likes the way his guys are responding to the adversity. It seems as though they're keeping their energy and mood up. So we'll see if they can start coming through with some big hits as we go forward. Way to go. Four All right, minutes. thanks, Heidi. The third base First offering. And there's a swing and a miss at an off speed pitch to start him out. Nothing in one. Really feels like he's just on cruise control out there on the mound right now. Boy, this is a tight one. You kind of get the feeling like the next team that scores is going to win this one. 0 oh, 1, here's the pitch. Behind 0 2 now. Although he doesn't use that pitch too much, if he's able to steal some strikes early in the count, could be something they have to think about. Just got a piece to the right side. Ready with another 0 2. Off the plate, ball one. Little tardy on that swing as it's well wide of first. Here's another one, too. Swung on and missed. He didn't even come close to contact on a ball way out of the zone. One out. That strikeout was a real good example of a pitcher continuing to make a guy chase out of the zone. When you recognize a hitter's in protect mode, you don't have to come inside the strike zone. You can just expand further and further until he literally can't touch it. To the plate now, James McCann. Hard hit towards center. Under it is Trout, and there are two gone now. Now that no pitcher, Carlos Carrasco. So here now is the pitcher, Carlos Carrasco, flew out in his only at bat so far. First pitch on its way. As he'll ball take a look at ball side. one. One run on three hits and no errors on the Mets line score so far. Grounded back up the middle. He's got it. Go over to Aguilar at first will take care of him to end the inning. Mets go down one, two, three. We played five full, tied at one a shot. Now to bat, Mike Trout. It was a walk in his last trip. First delivery to him. 
No, nope. circle That's change ball. too low. Ball one. Good spot to be in right now as a hitter. Count your favor. One and zero. Oh. Good time to get a fastball and turn it loose. Now here's the pitch. That's in. Ball two. This is a spot you really don't want to be in with a great hitter like that. You can't just lay one in there, but you also don't want to run the count to 3-0. Outside, 3-0 now. Got through the fifth all right, but it looks like he's a little off kilter here to start the sixth. the zone a swing and a miss looked like he swung at ball four right there clearly he saw something in that pitch that he liked out of the pitcher's hand but that wasn't a pitch he was going to do a whole lot with tough pitch to lay nope. off but he ball did, four. and it's ball four, so the leadoff hitter is aboard to start the sixth. Well, the reason power hitters now, generally draw more two. walks than other guys is yeah. exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. So a runner at first now with nobody out, and the right-handed hitting Nicholas Castellanos will bat next. From the belt, kicks and deals. Circle change there, called strike one. You know, some guys just don't like pulling the trigger in a 0-0 count. They don't like the ambush tactic. They like to calibrate the speed, maybe pick up the break. They want to know everything your ball does before they pull the trigger. Oh, and you talk about a pitcher getting the benefit of the doubt. That's low, but called the strike anyway. Nothing in two now. Two takes and now he's down 0 and 2. I'm not sure, but he may have been taking to give a guy at first a chance to run. And he struck him out. Strikeout number eight now in the ballgame form. Well, pitching domination continues. Just a total of two oh, runs on the board. So both of these starters should feel really good about their showings. If you love good pitching, this has been the game for you. Play Jesus Aguilar as he will take a look at strike one on a fastball right down the pipe. Trout stands at first with one out. One and one now the count of the Marlins first baseman. Use the slide step there, Danny. Yeah, he's clearly thinking about the steal right here. Didn't happen, but the cat mouse game continues on. Now the one and one pitch is in there for the second strike. Hey, now he's got me confused up here. This is a known sinker baller out on the mound trying to roll a double play, and he throws him a four seamer. The one two is a breaking ball that can't find the zone, and it's even at two. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. Not a bad time right here to put that runner in motion. 3-2 count. You send the runner, and if it's a bad pitch, it's ball four. Struck him out, and he becomes the ninth strikeout victim thus far. Well, this pitching staff has done a pretty good job right there. That's the fourth time he struck out, and we're only in the second game of this series. In now, Jorge Alfaro. And a pitch out, nothing doing though, and that's ball one. First. And he has to dive, but he's back in easily. 
Runner aboard at first here with two gone in a 1 1 ball game. Lays off again and it's 2 and 0. You thank your lucky stars when you get a chance to hit behind a guy with as much speed as he has on first base. The entire defense is on guard and you know probably there's a fastball coming. And the sinker is over that time. It's back to two and one. Now the pitch. This is swung on and bounced to McNeil at second. Throw to first, beats him easily, and the side is retired. One left for Miami. Score remains tied one to one. Jeff McNeil will be the next to take a turn. The second baseman. Number six. Now here's the first offering. And he puts it on the ground to second. And the inning begins with a quick out number one. So one gone now as we give you a look at where these two teams find themselves entering play in the National League's Eastern Division race. Digging in next, Brandon Nimmo. He flew out in his last debut. He's ready. Here's the first pitch. A little bouncer. The wind up and the 0 1. That's a ball. One out, nobody on. Count is one and two now. Into the windup and the pitch. Swing and a laser off into foul territory. Another one two delivery. Now a swing and the barrel of the bat breaks in two that time. Throw just does beat him to the bag as that was pretty close. The left field, that'll make you smile as a pitcher. You make a good pitch, you, you blow the guy's bat up, but then you make the play yourself. In your head, you're thinking, nice swing, me. Into the box, Dominic Smith. As he'll take a tough pitch on the outside part of the plate for strike one. He's one for two in this one. Fouled away. One and two one to Dominic Smith. And he goes against the shift there as this is on the ground at the left side. And that's through for a hit. So that knock keeps the bottom of the sixth inning hot. So a two out single there and gets him a base runner. And that leads us to yeah, check out the team leaders in hitting here in the final month of the season. And you can see that the Mets are currently best in the senior circuit in that category. Next, the power bat of Pete Alonso. He gets a shot to hit here in the inning following the two out single. Yeah, and that hit might not amount to much, but anytime you can extend an inning and give a guy with plenty of pop a chance to swing it, the outlook of an inning changes dramatically. Becomes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. This is why pitching is so difficult. You're cruising along to give up a hit. Now you've got to lock in and get this middle part of the order done. 
Hits are now even at four apiece. Lays off the sinker here, a ball and a strike. We got one ball, one strike. And it's fouled away. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. Mets leave one. Score remains deadlocked at one. Aaron Luke is on to pitch from the bullpen now to start inning number seven. Number 32. Aaron. Luke. Seventh inning ready to roll. And that will give way to the third baseman, Brian Anderson. First offering on its way. Ball that down. One one waves and misses for now, strike number two. two. That's just a great pitch right there. Great execution. He just got that hitter to think that pitch was knee high. Nasty diving out of the zone. Got him. So he's down on strikes for the second time here tonight. Well I'm glad we get another look at that beauty of a pitch right there. You can't spot a sinker in a better location because even if you do get the bat on the ball, there's not a whole lot you could do with that. Textbook sinker. Stepping in now, Jazz Chisholm as he'll look at a breaking ball that misses for ball one. One for two in the ball game thus far. Ball and no strikes. Here it is. Hit sharply on the ground. And there are two away now. Miguel Rojas gets the call as a pinch hitter, and he'll get a chance with two out and the base is empty. Here's the first pitch to him. He'll watch one ball miss one, up no and away for a ball one and all. And he's a guy looking to break out in a big way. Hasn't been getting the results he or his club have been hoping for. Lifted in the air toward the line and right. Right fielder is on the run. A dive and he brings it in. And on a fantastic play, the inning is over. Worth a second look here as this is a beauty to end the inning. The three of us return with more Wednesday Night Baseball. Ladies After this, Chris Four Russen gets the call from the pen to take the ball for the home seventh. Number 52, Chris Russell. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And up next, the left-handed hitting Michael Conforto. Michael. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right hander is up in the point. One oh home. Hey. He'll be fine coming out of the bullpen in this one if he can keep the ball around the knees like that.
Now here's the pitch. A swing by Conforto, and this is driven to deep right. And as Mets fans have heard before, that ball's out of here. A solo home run there for Michael Conforto. Number 21 for him on the season, and the Mets move out to a 2-1 lead. Just about everyone was holding their breath on that one. Just barely snuck it inside the foul ball, and that's a huge swing of the bat in this game. Could be a deciding one. And that'll bring in the switch hitting Francisco Leroy. Standing in from the right side as he takes strike one. He's working on a one for two game so far. one count here's the pitch out in front there is this one's pulled off to the left side swing and he takes this the other way to right Castellanos is there one away Well, this one was squared up pretty good, but just like pitchers give up hits on well-executed pitches, batters make outs on balls they couldn't have hit much better. Into the box now, J.D. Davis. As he takes a called strike on the black, it's 0-1. A hit in two at-bats for him at this point in the ballgame. That. Here's the 0-1. I got a ball, one strike. That's Two balls ball and a strike. Russon has racked up over 70 innings on the mound, and during that time, he's worked to a sub one whip, less than one base runner allowed per inning. Set to deliver on two and one. Inside ball one. Every base runner in a close game like this really matters. So you can't afford to be giving out free passes this late. The three and one pitch. Gets him off the hook there as this isn't even close for ball four. He's going to be pretty upset with himself about that 3-2 pitch. All you want to do in that count is make a competitive pitch, but that one wasn't even sniffing the zone, and he let him get away. And now, James McCann. It's been an 0-for-2 effort for him to this point. First pitch of the A-B on its way. Hops this one up. No one can get there. It's a foul ball. And a sinker dips too low there. Into the dirt, in fact. Runner, yes, there yes. goes the runner. Down the left field line and deep. But this will wind up being a foul ball. Here comes the one two chopped at the plate to second for one but one's all they were ever going to get and the inning will continue Malik Smith will look for some two out magic here as he'll pinch hit with two gone and a runner at first. He's set here it comes. Ball He'll enter play here with an average just over 250. Three homers, 13 RBIs. One and 0 pitch on the way. Swing and a little blooper to center. 
Trout coming on. He slides and makes the catch. A beautiful play to end the inning. A fine sliding catch here will take us to break. The three of us return with more Wednesday Night Baseball after this. Trevor May has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 65, Trevor. Ready to begin the eighth, and that'll bring forth the veteran outfielder, Starling Marte. No, you're only down one right here, but the exploding stuff that's coming out of the back end of a lot of teams' bullpens. I mean, just more than 95 plus stuff diving all over the plate. It's gotten a lot tougher to scratch across runs against these teams' bullpens. The 1-0. Back up the middle and in for a base hit. With that, the Marlins get a good start to the inning with their leadoff man aboard. You can't ask for anything more than getting the leadoff no, man no. on right there. That's Brings the go-ahead run to the plate. He's in position oh, to do some damage. It'd be interesting to see how the manager plays this one. So now to the plate, Luis Arias. As he'll take a look at a slider that can't make it back to the corner. It's ball one. He's working on a one for three thus far. And a strike to even the count. One and one. On the stretch. Hey. Oh, strike in a dangerous location there, one and down. two. Wow, not sure what you're looking for right there, but that one was pretty much middle, middle, center cut. Tough pitch to take. Count still at one and two. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. And a fastball swung on and missed as they set him down for the second time here tonight. Really important time for a strikeout there, guys. Yeah, Tying one in first, so objective number one is stranding him on base. Yeah. And now with one out, it becomes a lot more difficult to manufacture that run. Quick check on that time run good. at first. And that'll bring Mike Trout to the dish. As he will take strike one on the fastball here. No balls and a strike. Prior to the 0-1, here's no, a look for first. And the runner back. Ready with the nothing and one pitch. One ball, one strike. Way inside with that one, a pretty easy take there. The one one. Ball inside. Hey, curveball that kind of backed up on him right there. Might have popped out of his hand just a little bit earlier than he intended. Second pitch inside the throw is well behind the play. That's an easy stolen base. 90 feet is a big deal when you're talking about a one run game, so that's a little risky. But hey, sometimes you have to be aggressive and force the other team to stop you. The pitcher's duel continues here. Two to one scores would play the eighth. And he fouls this one off. Ball four, ball four again and they clearly just don't want any part of him in this one and with first base open the last thing he wanted to do was give him something to hit in the heart of the zone so no harm done force out anywhere now 
Next will be the cleanup hitter, Nicholas Castellanos. In his career versus this pitcher, it's a big enough sample size, but he's just one for 14. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. He swings and sends it on a line to right center. And he has come through big time as this ought to tie the ball game and maybe even get him a lead. And the run will score all the way from first. It's a three to two ball game. You know, it's awfully difficult to score runs late in the game after being down by one hero. That base hit drives in two. That's a huge base hit. What a momentum swing. What an A-B right there. Now you got to grab your leather and go out and flash some D for the boys. Dylan Batensis. The call is pitch with one gone in the top of the eighth. Number 58. Dylan. Up next for Miami, Jesus Aguilar. It's been a rough go of things at the plate for him so far, but his guys are looking for him to change that right here. Yeah, nothing better than coming through for the boys in a tight game, Matt, especially when you're kind of due to do something productive. First pitch coming, here it is. Well behind that fastball, there's a swinging strike. Castellanos, the runner at second with one away. Good pitch there down below the zone, got him to go after it. This is going to be an interesting at bat. I think he has to be pitching for a strike out here, so we'll see what kind of sequence he uses. That's Breaking ball. ball below the zone, that's one ball, ball one. Two strikes. Time, but he's able to make a little contact to keep this at bat going. Rounded up the first baseline. Got him. And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. What's your take on all the strikeouts we see in the game today, Dan? That was his third tonight, and it seems we're seeing that a lot more these days. Yeah, Matt, there's been a real change in philosophy as far as hitting in baseball today. A lot of guys think now that an out is an out. A strikeout is just as good as a regular out, but we're seeing strikeouts at an alarming rate in baseball right now. Jorge Alfaro is at the plate now as he looks at strike one. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. Looking to keep this a one run game, the pitch. Nope. One ball, one strike. A ball and two Count. strikes now. One and two. Now a bouncing ball for the shortstop, Lindor. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. So it's two runs on two hits, no errors, and a runner left. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth coming up. The Marlins on top, three to two. Dylan Floro is on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Top of the Mets order, digging in, Jeff McNeil. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. First pitch coming, here it is. And he gets ahead 0-1. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. The wind up and the 0-1. Pops this one up. Floro has room in foul territory. And that's the first out of the inning. Here's the former first round draft choice, Brandon Nimmo. Now the pitch. And that misses.
chances for ball one. This one, everything we could have hoped for. Three to two in inning number eight. And the sinker is over here, and that evens things at one. And now a slider in on the hands, and he's lucky that one didn't come and get him. Early and now even at two and two. Into the windup and the pitch. Three balls, two strikes. Well, you don't see it all that often, but this might be a good time for a three-two change. If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. Swing and a miss on the changeup, and there are two gone. Well, we've seen some really good pitching from these guys in this one. The bullpen has looked Number sharp and it backed Number up a two. nice effort turned in by the Number starter. Two. These days, pitching has become a full staff effort, and I've been impressed with the job these guys have done so far. At the plate now, Dominic Smith. As he'll ball watch one. a sinker here that misses, it's ball one. He's two for three and looking for more here. Wind up. Here comes the 1 0. That's that good. missed. Close. It's ball two. 2 0. He may be down 2 0 after those first two pitches in this AB, but those are pitches he can feel pretty good about. They did miss by a whole lot, so it's not like he's all over the place. And the pitch. Great help. Two out, nobody on. Three and one to the Mets left fielder. Hey, this pitcher better be careful right here. My man at the plate is not trying to push something to the opposite field. And he lays off ball four. So now the potential time run here is aboard late in the game. And with the bases empty and three balls, I think they were probably just saying, hey, we're not going to compound our mistakes here. Better issue a free pass and give him something to drive. Time called here as with the potential time run aboard, they'll make the move to get a little more speed out there. High left with Jeff Van here, and standing in, it'll be Pete Alonso. And a big at bat here as he'd be the go ahead run. First offering, as he'll take a look at an off speed pitch here that misses for ball one. Hey, I know the tying runs at first right here, but if the pitcher on the mound executes, keeps the ball in play, I think good things are going to happen. Runner on first with two away. Fouled off. Here's the 1-1. One, one. one and two now. Hit back up the middle. Scooped up. And as it turns out, the two-out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. Met strand one. They trail three to two. Randy Rosarena will stay in the ball game now and take over in left field. Now playing left field. Number 56. Joey Lucchese enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Set to start the ninth in this one and set to go as the third baseman, Brian Anderson. Ready to deal. Here comes the first pitch. The third baseman, Brian Anderson. The windup and the 1 0 pitch. Swung on and missed. 1 and 1. Flair hit toward right. There to make the catch is McNeil, and there's one away. 
the bat. And now in the box, Jazz Chisholm. Yeah. He grounded out last time up. First pitch of the AB on its way. Here's the 0 1. Good hard sinker swung out and missed 0 and 2. And it looks now like a right hander has begun to get loose in the Mets bullpen. The 0 2 home. And they'll try to one bounce a curveball on 0 and 2, but he holds back. It's 1 and 2 now. Swing and a miss here, and the first two are dispatched to begin the ninth. It's always nice to keep a guy that has good wheels off base, and that's just what they did right there. Big strikeout, keep that guy off the base path. Corey Dickerson will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher here. Pinch hitting for the Marlins. Number 23, Corey. First pitch on the way. Ball one. He comes in with that average down in the 240s. 10 home runs and 61 RBIs. The 1-0. One run game here in the top of the ninth. Hit out towards second. Fielded cleanly. They'll whip this one to first in time, and that ends the inning. One, two, three go the Marlins. And it remains a 3 2 ball game. Roberto Ozuna comes out of the bullpen to shut things down here in the ninth. Number 54. Roberto Now into the box is Michael Conforto. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. A not an easy thing to do to try to come back and tie a game or take the lead off of a guy like this, one of the game's elite closers. Fastball off the plate away for ball one. Checks his swing, but this pitch is right there for strike one. Set. Here comes the 1 1. This one is fouled away up to the concourse area. You can really tell they're trying to keep the ball in on this big slugger right here. Is that an effort to keep him from getting extended, do you think? Yeah, I think that's the idea, Matt. But he might spin the win if he starts looking for it in there. Here he comes again, 1-2. Lays two. off, 2-2 two and two now. I love these grinder at bats right here. Kind of a la Wade Boggs in the early 80s where he would just foul off strikes that he didn't want to hit and wait for that pitch he was certainly sitting on and drive it off the monster. The 2 2 is looked at and the count moves full. These are the kind of ABs, regardless of the outcome, you go back to the dugout as an offensive player and your teammates are loving on you for making that pitcher work and battling it out. Oh, he can only battle for so long as he's finally set down here after an eight pitch at bat. So the leadoff man gone to start the top of the night as we take a look at league saves leaders entering play. And as you see, he's up here at the top, currently tied for second in that category in the National League. Next, here is Francisco Lindor. He's working on a one for three thus far. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. Now this is a perfect example of why this manager feels so 
confident going to this beast in the ninth right here. He is throwing absolute thunder right here, pumped up, and looks the part. Skied in the air to straightaway left. Marte is under it. Two gone. Ready now is J.D. Davis. He's one for two in this one. From the stretch, here's the pitch. And he just misses inside with the fastball there. Clearly off with his timing on that one, a swinging strike. Gotta love a reliever that comes in firing bullets. And his fastball is a good one. And he misses two, two and one. one Fans on their feet in a one-run ball game in the last of the ninth. Good pitch as this is swung on and missed. And now they're down to perhaps their final strike of the evening. And that's okay. low, so a good eye there as he works the count back full. Great take right there, but the last thing you want to do is be called out on strikes to end the game. So now the potential time run here is aboard late in the game. The catcher, number 43. Yeah. So now to the play, James McCann. They'll be looking for something to drive into the gap and drive home that time run from first. remember John Smoltz telling me the greatest asset a closer can have is short-term memory and this situation calls for it right here he's got to forget that he has any traffic on the base pass and he will make the catch here to end things and the Marlins have taken the first two games of this series on the road as this one is over three to two the finish in tonight's game Miami came through late taking the lead in the eighth to secure the victory Chris Russell wins his fourth game out of the bullpen this year. So that will wrap things up for Mark DeRosa, Dan Pleszak, Heidi Watney, and our whole crew. I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, head to theshow.com.